Hey everyone, Lane here with Windows10Update.com and today we want to show you what is new in Windows 10 build 10558. Now a quick note, this is an internal insider build. It has not been released to Windows insiders. So we do not at this point recommend installing it. It does have some bugs which we will talk about uh, some of those during the course of this video. So the first thing I want to show you is what's new in Microsoft Edge. So first of all, there's a slightly modified icon for web notes here, but what's most interesting is the tab previews. So if you hover your mouse over a tab, it will show you what is going on on that tab before you click over to it. Now, if we also go into the settings of this application here, we can also see that there is a special settings menu for viewing favorites settings. So you can actually import your favorites from Internet Explorer. You also have this option here to show the favorites bar. That's always been there. It's just now inside of this additional menu. Now, the way that you go ahead and change the default search engine has also been modified. Now, instead of a drop down box, you just have this button here that says change, and then you go ahead and select the search engine that you want to use and then click set as default. So it's a little bit more streamlined there. All right, now let's go ahead and take a look at the new start menu. So uh, from previous builds, we now have the option to have a uh, four wide, uh, four columns wide sections here in the start menu. So that remains. Some icons for certain applications like registry editor have been updated as well. But what's really most special here is the new resize mechanic, the new right click menu really. So they've modified this so that it looks a little bit more modern, looks a little bit more in line with what we expect from Windows 10. So instead of having all of the different options shown here, you have sub menus. So we have this nice icon for unpin, so it's easier to know what that, what that uh, option does. And then under resize, we have these little icons that will show you kind of what size you're going to be switching to. Now in addition to that, we have three brand new applications in Windows 10. We have known these were coming, um, but we do get to take a brand new look at these right here. So there's the messaging app. Now messaging is essentially just Skype conversations. Um, so rather than having the Skype desktop app, you can now use the messaging app. In my tests, this has, this has not worked. I have not been able to get messages to go through. Phone calls have not been working. That may just be a problem that I'm having, uh, but right now it's not working completely for me. Now in the future, Microsoft is most likely going to be offering features similar to what Apple is doing with continuity between the iPhone, the iPad, and Mac OS X. That is, all kinds of text messages and phone calls will be forwarded via Bluetooth or via Wi-Fi most likely between different devices. So if you get a text message on your Windows 10 phone, that will also show up in the messaging app here on Windows 10. Similarly, a phone call will also show up on your desktop. So you could potentially answer the phone on your Surface Pro 4. Now, right now, the phone app does nothing other than show you attempted phone calls or missed phone calls to other Skype contacts. So these are not regular phone calls. These are, well, right now it says Microsoft messaging phone calls. In addition to that, we also do have the new Skype video application, which is pretty much exactly the same as the Skype app from Windows 8. It's just been updated a little bit in terms of the styling. Now, if we go into the settings application, we will see a couple of additional options. So if we go into update and security, there's a new section here for find my device. So this will save your device's location periodically based on inform location information that's either uh, able to gather from Wi-Fi networks. Um, so that way, if you do happen to leave your device somewhere, you'll be able to go and look at a map on another device and see approximately where your device is. And you can see you just go to this link here in order to see where that device is. Additionally, if we go ahead over to the system and then storage area, you can see that now there is an option to install applications to external drives. So right now I only have a backup drive attached, but if I did have an SD card attached as well, that would be an option. So I could automatically save applications to different locations, which is fantastic if you do have a device like the Surface Pro 3 that is limited to a certain amount of solid state storage. That's it for this new build. If there's anything we missed, let us know in the comments.